Hi, and welcome to The Tingoons, a podcast in which we take an adult and critical look into the world of cartoons and animation and analyze how they affect the pop cultural landscape at large. I'm one of your hosts, Nikki. I'm Nina. And I got kung fu pulled over last night. It sucked. I don't want to harp on it. Uh, fuck the police. Let's move on. All right. Oh. Uh. <laughs> this week we are talking about the Kung Fu Panda movie franchise. The third one came out a couple of weeks ago. And in our quest to constantly be on top of new releases, we're talking about that instead of Zootopia, which is apparently crazy good, and we'll do it later. We'll do it very soon. Yeah. Right now, Kung Fu, Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu. Fupa, as I've been calling it, or maybe Kung Fupa. <laughs> Kung Fupa! <laughs> <laughs> dropping some, what, dropping some Gen 7 Pokemon leaks? Oh, man. <laughs> it took me a bit. <laughs> Is that the new fighting type? Ugh. Um, we got some news, so let's just get into it. Uh, okay. Um, got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff having to do with Disney XD. And I guess we'll start with the bummer news first, considering it's a bummer. And yeah. that is that Wander Over Yonder has will not be returning for a third season. <sighs> Um, you know, this was announced by Craig himself on his Tumblr. He said, um, you know, they presented a pitch for a third season arc, um, you know, and they were hoping to do more stuff with it. And at the time, their bo- the Disney XD and TVA were really excited about it, but apparently it's described as the higher up bosses of bosses of bosses at Disney decided not to continue with the show. What? So, like, fucking... I don't know who's running Disney. But, like, that... Because it's, like... Everyone's always so crazy whenever stuff gets, like, shut down or canceled, like, for, for not great reasons, and everybody has all these theories. But this sort of opened my eyes. It's like, man, sometimes you can just get a phone call... Like, like a freaking mysterious deep throat phone call over the phone. Just like, yeah, yeah, you're done. And then they hung, and then they hang up. And, like, they don't need a reason. Yeah, they uh, they just felt that, you know, two seasons and 80 episodes was enough, and they didn't need to produce anymore. You, you just got rid of Gravity Falls. What more do you have? Well, we'll get to that later in this segment, but... Um, it has nothing to do with ratings. Yep. It was... They knew about this before season two even came out. Um, so hopefully they managed to like wrap up season two in some in some meaningful way. Oh yeah, they definitely will. Um, they have plans. Like a lot of people are like freaking out, like oh it's all over forever, and it's like there's still like the rest of season two, which yeah. is seven half hours. So like, price six as of this recording. Yes, yeah, six more episodes out of of this recording. So you know it's. It's not, you know. <laughs> and 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 Craig said like, man, I I've got I've got like more ideas. Like that's the thing. Like mm-hmm. like the, the. He wasn't done. No, none of them no. were done. It's so bizarre because the ratings were seemingly fine. Uh, yeah. You know, critical acclaim was high. Uh, but it apparently just doesn't fucking matter. I don't know. I don't know if like. The show is really expensive to produce. It doesn't look yeah, like it's I, disproportionately expensive. So one of the uh, Frank uh, Ang- Angon or Angones Angones, I would Angones, uh, you know, he did a post doing some FAQs about it, and he said that the most likely theory is that Wander Over Yonder has always done better in repeats than it did in premieres, um, uh, and so. Disney probably decided that, you know, 80 pieces of Wander content was enough that they could just keep repeating them without a noticeable impact and draw that the same ratings without spending money on new episodes. So the logic is if we cancel it, then there'll be repeats forever, and then that'll make people want to watch it more? No, it was that... Spending more money on the show probably wouldn't have resulted in higher ratings anyway. So they figured, you know, we have a good amount. We'll just repeat it and make money that way instead of pouring money into new content, which doesn't 
make that much money. This yeah, yeah, and re- just such re- a punch you know, in the money off gut. of repeats is more or less free money. They yes. don't have to do any more work. It's just you know opportunity cost as opposed to you know airing something else. This happened uh, like the day after we talked so big about My Fair Haiti. This was just, yeah. I, just, like, I woke up after that feeling great about the show, specifically about Wander Over Yonder. And then I wake up the next day to that news. Unfortunately, this decision was made after season one, so this doesn't affect the premiere ratings of anything that's happened in season two. Yeah, yeah like it's all—it it was all fucking pointless. crazy. Yeah. No, one thing Angona says in this is that you know one of his own speculations is that when all but when all things are said and done Disney probably spent more on making the cartoon slash the bot than they did on Snow White and the Seven Dwarves that's probably without inflation yeah with probably. inflation that movie probably costs like 85 billion dollars and I mean like that's that's a really awkward comparison that's like two different things yeah yeah but like but regard like I mean the the thing I was saying earlier is it's like on one hand like it's a super bummer due to the due to when it happened, like, when it was announced, uh, revealed. But also, on the other hand, thinking about it logically, it's like, you know, like, this, this happens. So, like, yeah. a lot of great cartoons didn't even get two seasons, and without the, without, like, all, a lot of internet buzz, sometimes we just don't even know why. Yeah. And, and, and also, like, you know, Craig McCracken's Craig McCracken. I remember seeing him posting concept art on DeviantArt for Wander years and years ago. Me too. So in that time, dog, that man has three other great ideas. Like Probably. Yeah, he'll he said it. He's like, I, yeah, I've I mean I've got other stuff in the works. I'm develop I'm I'm working on something else for a pitch. Yeah. So, um and Yeah. The reason why they didn't say anything up until now is because they thought that if they once season two actually came out Things would sway more in their favor, and Disney might change their mind. That's why they sort of saved it um, until now. But and people were like saying, like, "Oh man, can, like, can we, like, can we save this? Can we save Wander?" And then Craig McCracken chimes in, basically, like, "No." <laughs> the thing he said basically was, "Like, on the slim chance that Wander does continue, like, I'm already, like, it's already over for, like, I'm not gonna be involved in it. Like, it's that, it's all been, it, it all happened so long ago. Like, we're just now learning about this thing that already fucking happened." Yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, they still have ideas, and they're holding on to them just in case years down the line, now that rebooting is a thing, it might be a thing again ten years later, so whatever. Yeah. They'll hold on to it. Yeah, it's not been a great year for, for McCracken, because, like, I mean, obviously the show has been phenomenal. He's been making incredible, or finally releasing incredible art. But, you know, the, his great show got canceled for no real reason. And, you know, his first show is, you know, was is going on completely without him. Which, regardless of whether or not PPG, the PPG reboot is good or not, or whether or not he likes it or not, that's gotta suck. It's something you spend so much of your life on is now continuing completely without Something that was yours. So, yeah, that's unfortunately what's happening to Wander. But, you know, we still have a, an epic finale coming up. Um, you know, it's six more episodes with a 22-minute finale. That's instead of it being two parts, it's one full big Television's rough. conclusion. Yeah, they, they were always planning on wrapping up the Dominator stuff this season, right? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, we will never know. I think I, think I may have read that bef- a while ago. Perhaps. Anyway. I mean, they have to because... They're they got it now, <laughs> but like my my biggest thing before we move on is just like the the thing that really struck me the biggest was because like, um, I I sort of took it like kind of on a personal level because I, I just sort of put myself in these shoes because it's like I want to do this, and so mm-hmm. I, I just sort of like this is this is television, this is the yeah. industry. I'm sure I'm sure we're all taking this at, at least outwardly probably worse than. Craig, because if I were him working in the industry as long as I have, it's like this he's he's been phenomenally lucky up until now. His other yeah. two shows got six seasons. That's that's really, really amazing. Yeah. If, especially when they were released in the children's uh, cartoon market. Mm-hmm. That's really impressive. 
and like he's I'm sure he's still counting his blessings every day and it's like it, it, it could ha- it could happen to me it could happen to you anybody trying to work in television you can wake up one morning and get a phone call like hey you're done and you got to be able to keep going after that yep so since that is happening Disney XD is still going to be a thriving network uh, Gravity Falls is finished Wander is going to be finished soon Star is coming back which yes. is very exciting Yes. And we have some new programs coming. So the first and probably the most talked about one is the new DuckTales reboot series. Um, I, like, th- that is really exciting. Yeah, it looks great. I love the art. It's wonderful. It, it looks like it came out of the comics. Yeah! Uh, which is wonderful. Um, it, it's, it's, it, it looks like a combination of like this the regular aesthetic and also modernization, but in a way that's very distinct from the Disney Mickey Mouse shorts, which is great that they're, you know, distinguishing themselves. Yeah. Um, let's see here. It's going to come out on the 20, in, uh, 2017. Uh, so it's still a little while from now, <laughs> but it's coming and we have this image and it's very exciting. Uh, Donald is going to be more prominent. Don- yeah. Donald's going to be more prominent because Donald's great. We've got he was shipped Louis, out for Scrooge, most of the first show. And a he was female character he was on a I'm tour. Familiar with she she was in the original. Who's the girl? I forget her name though. Oh 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 um, Web Webigail Vanderquack. Uh- <laughs> Web- Webby for short. That's so cute. E. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. So I, I'm really I'm really excited for this because it's like those. People who don't, like, look up, like, the real legitimate history of comics outside of DC and Marvel, Donald Duck fucking made modern comics and manga. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a pretty good cracked article about everything that the Donald Duck and DuckTales comics are responsible for, including, like, a, the, they as, like, a, a thing they just made up, it's, act, like, how they actually, um surface submerged ships you like what like one of the the triplets thought of was oh just put some ping pong balls in there and it'll elevate it that's what okay turns out real thing that they did yep. that they came up with later they <laughs> myth busted it it's right yeah i i'm just excited because it's going to be an adventure based show with like yeah. kind of a different setting in each episode and like scrooge is great donald is great i've never been big on the triplets but who knows? Um, finally, a, finally, an insanely rich, angry old man we can all get behind. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm kind of sick of Batman. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little tired of him too. He's the same thing. Sorry, Batman. Dick, um, Gra- Dick Grayson was the best Batman. Moving on. Yep. Oh, y- yeah. <laughs> um, and on top of this uh, reboot series, there are two original animated series coming out as well in 2017 um one is called billy dilly super duper subterranean summer Mm. all right and the other one's (laughs) called country club Um, what (laughs) yes (laughs) those of you don't know toots works at a country club (laughs) also the second show's name is a 12th the length of the first one apparently country club will not come out in 2018 and it comes from comic book creators Chris and Shane uh, Houghton, who worked on Harvey Beaks. And um, Billy Dillies hails from Aaron Springer, who worked on SpongeBob. And that will be coming out first. Uh, and then, of course, there's the third season of Star, uh, along with the second season of Two More Eggs. Which is not something I expected to be renewed, but hey! <laughs> um... So, Billy Dilly follows an eccentric, science-obsessed 7th grader and his lab partners, Zeke and Marsha, as their summer break takes an unexpected turn and they find themselves stuck in a bizarre, magical world beneath the Earth's surface. Uh, The voice cast includes Jessica McKenna as Billy, Tom Kenny as Zeke, and a YouTuber Uh (laughs) named Katie Wayne as Marsha. I mean, I guess good for her, but I don't like the idea that YouTube YouTubers are even able to go legit. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, hey, we're, like, a step up from YouTubers, so, like, chill. <laughs> yeah, Nick, I'm not saying, on. but I'm saying I don't think I should be able to go legit. <laughs> I don't know. I think that this should disqualify me, is what I'm saying. 
Uh, Country Glob centers on Cricket Green, a mischievous and optimistic country boy who moves to the big city with his family. Uh, Cricket's curiosity and enthusiasm leads him wildly out of place, leads him down, leads his wildly out of place family on epic journeys and into the hearts of his new neighbors. Okay, so the Director, title's a pun. There's no yeah. actual Country Club. Good, because I've got ideas, so... Mm. Yeah, what th- what that sounds like is if Hey Arnold starred Stinky Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it won't really bite. Yep. Rob Ranzetti, who directed many Gravity Falls episodes, is going to serve as executive producer, and the Houghton brothers will serve as co-executive producers. I'm lo- looking at this image. Cricket, Cricket's understanding of how chickens work comes entirely from Legend of Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think he's cute. Oh, he's cute. Bo- both shows are cute. I think that one looks, you know, based on these still images, cuter. But Nobody's uh, got noses. No. And everybody's got w- jaundice, and then there <laughs> are these two people who have red skin and blue skin. That might be uh, lighting, because they're in the distance. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's not how lighting works. <laughs> All right. See, and this is also, all this is on top of the other stuff they're uh, premiering this year, like uh, Milo Murphy's Law and those two other things that don't have Weird Al in them, so I don't remember what they are. Yeah, we'll definitely keep our eyes on They're expanding, so hopefully something, one of these will be good to make up for this hole that uh, Wander is going to leave, but here's the thing, they could have added all this stuff and not canceled Wander. Fuckers. To, to, To be fair... Canceling a show unjustly after two seasons is better than their former MO of canceling every single thing after one. Yeah, XD's gotten that better. That was their jam for a while. That was everything on XD until, like, for for uh, until very recently. Until basically when we started this podcast. Us starting this podcast coincidentally coincided with XD getting at least some of their shit together. You're all welcome. Yeah, it seems like they're a little more interested in pumping their money into new properties that could have new fans and potential than old stuff that is from like from a really detached executive business decision, which which is exactly what it was. I do get it. Yeah, but also I get I'm it not too. an I'm not an executive, so fuck them. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm upset, but it does kind of make sense. It's the way it works, unfortunately. Yeah. Yep. But right. we've got a lot of new stuff coming, so it's very exciting as well. Yep, and then we got some Nickelodeon news. Yes, we do have some Nickelodeon news. See, if, Let's see if these clowns can get it together. Yes, Nickelodeon is also trying to launch some, like, a shit ton of new shows um, in an attempt to make themselves relevant again. Um, they recently had their sort of presentation to sort of say what they're doing. Um, uh, so shows that are coming back are Shimmer and Shine, Blaze and the Monster Machines, Paw Patrol, Wally Kazam, Dora and Friends, Into the City, and for preschool shit. And then SpongeBob is still coming for seasons 10 and 11. Uh, Harvey Beaks is still coming. Hooray. Pig, Goat, Banana Cricket, More Turtles, More Fairly Odd Parents, and Alvin and the Chipmunks, which I didn't uh, know. Uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks is how it's spelled. Yes. Their designs are terrifying. The films... In the CG? It's not the CG. The, so, like, the the films pushed the the furriness more, and, and like, the, in the films, they're literally just real-life chipmunks, like, chipmunk-sized chipmunks. Mm-hmm. This show goes in the opposite direction. They're almost people, and it's yeah. disgusting me. Every time <laughs> I look at their almost human faces, I'm like, this is the... This this isn't the Uncanny Valley. This is the Uncanny Valley's like creepy uncle. I didn't even know they made a show for it. it, it and, and the worst part is they 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 used like they 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 covered like the original '80s cartoons like really good theme song. So it's like oh they used the old theme song that I liked when I would wake up too early for school. Like maybe it's good. And then I watch it. and I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, what's more interesting is that there are new. Ooh, oh. Puke and die. I don't want to puke. I don't. I'm scared now. Okay. Ma- okay. You know how Roxanne and Goofy movie was pretty whack looking. 
Uh, worse, yeah. worse, worse, a hundred million, way worse. <laughs> uh-huh. Like take, oh, fucking, oh my god, we have to move on. Okay, oh. yes. So, but the main thing is that there's a bunch of new stuff coming down the Tune pipeline. Oh, okay, yeah, this one seems interesting. Well, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> it's called The Loud House. It's picked up for 26 episodes. It is the first series to be greenlit out of Nickelodeon's animated shorts program. Huh. And is inspired by the first time creator Chris Savino, who has worked on Rocco's Modern Life and the Powerpuff Girls' chaotic life growing up in a huge household. Uh, there's Bunsen is a Beast, which is picked up for 20 episodes. Which we've talked an about. original show produced by Butch Hartman. What's advantageous about the Loud House being picked up, whether or not that's good, that means that there's hope for more sh- uh, shorts from that shorts program being picked up because some of them are, are really, really good. You know, summertime Memories, uh, Buck and yeah. Lou, Magic mm-hmm. Children Doing Things. Some extremely good stuff in there that has a lot of potential. Badly Drawn Animals. Um, I actually think that might be crazy as like a full show, but like it was very funny and good, so I want it to be full show but yeah uh i haven't seen the loud house but hope it works yeah hope it works hope it works to grease the wheels for these other shows yes Hopefully. uh there's mysticons which we've also talked about which is sort of a action girls toy crossover franchise there's something called welcome to the wayne picked up for 20 marks uh this is apparently nick's first digital short form series to be greenlit for television we talked about this one like a year ago. Yeah, like a year oh, ago. Yeah. It's um, two 10-year-old boys exploring the crazy, unpredictable world of their New York City apartment building, The Wayne. Um, it's created and written by Bill Lopez, who worked on Phineas and Ferb and The Wonder Pets. It sounds a little like Sweet Life is Zack and Cody, but hopefully just not top-to-bottom garbage. <laughs> uh, and then there's Albert which is Nickelodeon's first original animated TV movie. It's just the sweet story of a tiny Douglas fir tree named Albert who loves Christmas more than anyone. <laughs> but his miniature size has kept him inside the plant nursery year after year. Joined by his two best friends, a fun-loving palm tree and a rambunctious weed, Albert treks across the country <laughs> to live his dream of becoming the world's most famous Christmas tree. <laughs> that sounds that sounds like a made-up Christmas special that characters in a different cartoon watch. <laughs> yeah, or li- like oh. one of those things that comes on at like three thirty in the morning, in like I guess November, like um. That movie they made of Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Oh, uh, yes. So that's some stuff to keep an eye on. Yeah, we'll see. And the other big thing coming out of Nick uh, very soon, later this month, is that Sunday, March 27th, they will be airing a half-hour episode, Transdimensional Turtles, which will be a crossover between Nick's TMNT and the original 80s Turtles. Yeah! I saw I saw a clip of that. It looks really good and way better than the Turtles Forever thing that the 20, 2003 show did that was dumb and really not nice towards the 80s show, and they didn't get any original voice actor back, and freaking... And, and now they... Mm, it's, this, this one, one has good. all of the voice actors back. Cam Clark, Rob Paulson, who already works on this show. <laughs> they Very would be gorgeous. fucking whack if they couldn't get him back to do Raphael. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, like, no, nope, won't do it. I've, 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 already, I've already got this... Uh, sorry, guys, I've already got this other turtle gig. Like, yeah, Rob. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> Barry Gordon and Townsend Coleman. Um, as the modern day turtles are transported to another dimension and meet their 80s alter- alternate reality counterparts. Um, actor the, Pat. The, the Frank- 80s turtles look really good in CGI. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you know what this looks like, at, but better is the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour? Because it looks like they're both doing each. Like, yeah. like we're doing um, yes. the 2012 turtles in, you know, 2D in a style reminiscent of the 80s stuff but with their proportions and everything. Whereas, mm-hmm. you know, the 80s. Yeah. Dorkast turtles are in uh, CG. Well, um, except for Raphael. Yeah. It looks like Ra- the original In this Raphael, image, Raphael, Raphael staying, in- staying in his respective universes. I, I think that was just to show what they looked like, because in the clip I watched, all four of them are in oh, CG. Oh, okay. Um, also, Pat Fraley, um, the original voice of Krang, is coming to reprise his role. 
Cool. Yes. Unfortunately, the original voice of Shredder is, of course, no yeah. longer with us. That fucking blows. That, that's the yeah. saddest. Oh, there are a bunch of Gen Xers screaming at us right now. It's like, they're not the original Turtles! Oh, you mean like the The, the, comic the comics. Book? Well, they didn't the have pro- voices. They didn't have voices. The image, the designs aren't the original Turtles. No. That's apparently a Gen X yeah. thing of the guys who grew up on the comics and the the cartoon came out and they're... If you were a big fan of the comics and those couldn't... Would be, those would be impossible to animate because they were drawn in a really 90s, janky, black and white underground comic style. Like, there's no such thing as models or proportions. It wouldn't even look good. Yeah, but even, like, tonally, it's a huge departure from the comics. Which yeah. we've, like, in our Turtles episode, we, um praised the creators for, like, being able to adapt it to different needs. But if you were a huge fan of the comics and that yeah. cartoon came out, you're like, what the fuck is this shit? Because well, well, they're nothing... They're very, very, I've, very different. Apparently, like, it, like the, 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 the post, like, the, the article for this crossover was like, and also other turtles in, like, a wink-nudge kind of way, so I don't know what they're gonna do. Maybe the 2003 ones will be up in? Yeah, yeah, it this. says here. <laughs> what if... What if they fucking dig the old... Puppets out of a landfill. Oh my god. Oh god. Yes. No. Just with those big, those big human teeth. Yes, that would be dope. Just chomping. But for like eight seconds, and they're and like all the other turtles just start puking. So it says here that all eight turtles must join forces to battle the '80s Krang and Krang Subprime. After meeting their retro counterparts in a 2D animation world, the entire crew returns to the CG animation dimension, giving their new friends a taste of their 3D realm. In another dimensional twist, the episode will offer a glimpse of the turtles in a comic book world resembling the Mirage Studio comics series by Kevin Eastman that started it all. So this right. sounds like a dream come true. Yeah, this sounds <laughs> for a really turtles cool. fan. Because it's like I think the like I, again I think to, like to, this is this is basically them apologizing for 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 Fox Kids that made Turtles Forever. Like, like, because this this is almost the exact same concept, but like, it's gonna be yeah. good. I'm I'm really behind on turtles, unfortunately, but I'm I'm gonna have to watch this. Hopefully, I don't need to know what's going on in space, because apparently they're in space right now. Yeah, they're in space right now. The, the 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 clip the clip that I watched, they're gonna come up with some convoluted plot reason to get them back, because like all Leo, all, like they the clip opens Leo going like. I can't believe we're back on Earth in the past. <laughs> clearly, I love this show. They weren't. They 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 clearly prob. They probably wanted to produce this at some other point in time, but like this is when they get a chance to do it, so they gotta yeah. wedge it in there. Yeah. Okay. But this is very exciting. I'm very excited. It's, yep. it's gonna be so cool. All right. Let's get that. That's our news. Let's get yeah. into these movies. What's up? 